The Warner system is 30 channels of entertainment, information, and fun. This small console, with its five response buttons and message light, makes the Warner system an expanded form of communication. These buttons allow Warner subscribers to tell us what they are thinking, to participate in our programming and in our commercials. That's what makes our system really different. When the television set is turned on, the C1 Columbus Alive channel comes on automatically. This channel is designed especially for two-way communication. And there's more that makes us different. Why, it's the way we do things. Thanks, Buzz. Well, obviously, this isn't a studio. It's a real street. And real people live on it, including some people that you're going to be interested in meeting. Pat and Francine Morin. Well, they live right over there at 1800 Goodale Street. They're a young, working couple. Pat's a lawyer, and Francine is a fashion consultant. Their lives in this old house are what one of our shows is all about. The show is a tapestry of real experience and dramatized life situations. It explores this generation's optimism, doubts, triumphs, worries, and enthusiasms. It allows you, the audience, to participate with advice and opinions, and to join a stream of friends, neighbors, experts, and to take a rooting interest in their lives. They're two genuine people who cope like the rest of us, and who do their best to get the most out of life. Vivian, I am so glad you came by this afternoon because next week I have my seven-year-old nephew coming to spend two weeks with us while his mother has a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. And I'm so afraid that child is going to say, what's a hysterectomy and what am I going to tell him? Or what's mommy in the hospital for? When he asks what, what's mommy in the hospital for, you can tell him. I wouldn't bother trying to explain a hysterectomy to a seven-year-old. He wouldn't understand it, would he? No, he mm -hmm. wouldn't understand it. The important thing is that he be reassured that his mother is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. If anything, he'll be anxious about that. You may also be anticipating something that won't happen. He may not be nervous at all. Has, is he accustomed to spending time here? Oh, yeah. He comes and spends weekends with us. And, you know, I, I know he feels like this is the best place to go. And uh, I know he's going to be happy to be here. But I am a little bit concerned. You probably find he'll ask the same questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. Just to be reassured. That's right. And basically he's looking for reassurance. Mm -hmm. And you deal with that, you probably won't have many other difficulties. Mm -hmm. The important thing to do is kind of play it loose. Mm -hmm. If he wants to know something, he'll ask. Yeah. If he needs to be reassured, he'll indicate in some way. Yeah. And if you uh, answer his questions as honestly as you can. Yeah. I... Oh, what's going on? Hi, darling. Come in. Hi, who's this? This is Dr. Vivian Horner. This Do is my husband, Patrick Morin. Dr. Horner, pleasure to meet you. Please, it's Vivian. Nice oh. to meet you, too. <laughs> what have you girls been talking about? Well, Dr. Horner is a child psychologist, and since Frankie is coming next week to visit, I thought I would pick her mind, and she's helped me a great deal. Well, you go ahead and do that while I brew up some of this new coffee I got called Louisiane. Oh, every time he goes to the supermarket, he finds something new. Um, when Frank comes next week, if you don't mind, I would like to have your phone number, just in case I have some problems. Do you mind writing it down for me? Not at all. All right. And while I've got you here, I would like to uh, find out a few other things. One is, I've often wondered about people who have stepchildren. How, as a step-parent, do you discipline a stepchild? Well, in much the same way you discipline your own child, I think. Um, wouldn't you be afraid of maybe losing their love or their affection when you... I mean, after all, do you really have the right to spank them? Sure. You do. If, if you would spank a child of your own, then you would probably deal with a stepchild in the same way. There are, there are certain kinds of problems. For example, if you walk into a new situation, your presence mm -hmm. may be resented. Mm -hmm. and you may be very mm -hmm. conscious of that. But... You need to talk that over with the spouse to find out what the rules have been and what the patterns of discipline have been. Mm -hmm. And then you need to talk over with the child your own, your own ideas of you know, what the rules are and how you're going to respond. You don't want to you know, spring right. what it the on the rules are going to be, no yes, matter what. The rules are going to be. And children are very accustomed to the fact that different situations have different rules. That's for sure. Speaking of different situations, I have a number of friends who uh, were reared in the uh, service and traveled all over the world and were uprooted mm. and moved around from here to there and pillar to post. To Army what brats. What yes, effect does right. that have on, on children? Is, that, uh, is, is the travel good for them or better for them than being oh. in one place? 
The answer to that is yes and no. Uh, it affects some children very positively. I know in my experience, you often find that children of Army families have very close-knit families because the only constant in their lives is really the family, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So they but cling together. Yeah, but equally often, I think, you find children who are very uncertain in personal relationships. They're afraid to trust because they know the relationship will come to an end. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very hard to put that much investment into something. Uh oh, and excuse me. Oh. Coffee's ready. <laughs> sure. There's something else interesting and unusual and exotic about this product. It contains something called chicory, which oh, really? uh, I've never tried before. Sounds kind of interesting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to ask you about this coffee and chicory and a couple of other things. Why don't you get your consoles out? Uh, you know, chicory has been around for a long time. In fact, it really was uh, started in the Civil War when they needed to stretch what few coffee beans they had, and so they added chicory to coffee, and people started drinking it then and liking it, and they've been using it ever since. Mm. Okay. In fact, I wonder how many of you at home have ever tried chicory in your coffee? 18%. That's quite interesting. That's pretty good. Yes. And how many of you have tried Louisiana coffee? 15%. Well, maybe there's a big delicious surprise for the other 85%, but we're going to try this coffee and see how we like it. I know I'm going to like it because I'm a coffee freak. <laughs> no matter what the coffee tastes like, I like it. Yes. <laughs> Francine, there's your coffee. Ready for the noble experiment? Cheers, Cheers everybody. Cheers. Mmm, has a nice, strong, rich flavor, don't you think? Unique. Quite unique. It's very good. Very, very tasty. If you would like to join us in tasting Louisiana coffee, all you have to do is press button one, and we'll be happy to send you a two-serving sample. <laughs>